And how long were you able to determine that that device belonging to Jose Ibarra was in the forest? Yeah, so again, the last uh, Ruben data we saw was uh, 8.55, and then the next one we see isn't until 9.40. And by 9.40, has that device left the forest? Uh, you'll see in the timing advance where that device okay. is. Okay, so all right, so we'll get there then. Page 27. So again, timing advance arcs here, uh, plus we have Lake and Riley's GPS locations here. So the timing advance for uh, this device at 9.03.50 and 9.51, again, put it in this spot here. Again, one thing to remember is there's still no Rubin data, which means when we tested these areas here, there was Wi-Fi everywhere except for the park, which allows us to kind of help pinpoint where the device could have been, and that would be somewhere within this portion here. And then again, we have the Riley GPS locations, uh, and at 9.06, that device uh, is still headed southbound. Page 28. So here again, 9.06 to 9.09 a.m., uh, if we look at Riley's locations here, uh, we see now she's moved down here and at 9.06, she's now entering the woods here, the forest, and then her run trail takes her up and along this trail here at 9.09. .09. What we have on the Arbara device is again, timing advance check-ins at 9.11, or 9.09, 11 seconds, and 9.09.56, both of which are on this timing advance mark. Again, still no Rubin data during this time period, which allows us to say that device was most likely in the forested area somewhere along this park. And is it your expert opinion in looking at both Lake and Riley's Garmin watch data and the timing advance data from Jose Ibarra's phone that the, their two digital profiles are closing in on one another at this time? They are. The next slide. Um, so this is uh, 909 to 912. And again, if we look at uh, the Riley GPS here, uh, we see at 909.12, it's here. 909.51, it made that turn to go north and west along that trail. And then we have the rest of those locations here, 910 to 912. We also have um, some timing advance of her device. Again, her device checking in with the network at 9.10.51. And you see that as that blue arc right here. Um, we also have um, the, the, the timing advance for the 3978 red device. Um, and so what we see here is um, at 9.09.56 is the first one. It's using this tower here, and we see it reports the distance uh, at 0.58, uh, which is the exact distance of Riley's um, check-in uh, approximately one minute later. Um, here we have the device checking in using this distance right here uh, at approximately 910 uh, all the way to 912.08. So during this time period that we see on slide 29, uh, 9.09 a.m. to 9.12 a.m., our Lake and Riley's digital profile and the Jose Abara phone, again, next to one another or on top of each other are co coinciding. How would you describe it? I would say that they are very close. Okay. Next slide. Uh, again, this is a continuation, 9.13 to 9.09. Uh, again, we lo already looked at Riley's GPS. We know that's all kind of in the vicinity of the crime scene during this time period. Um, this is uh, also where we have some timing events off of her device, uh, still reporting approximately the same distance at 917 here. And during this time period, uh, we have uh, the Abara device checking in using this tower and sector here, these parks. Uh, at 913 to 909 with one of those during those time periods at 916 it's also checking in with this tower and sector here. 930 or excuse me page 31 920 to 927. Yeah continuation here uh, again we have 
looking at Riley's uh, GPS device, 920 to 92658. Again, 92658 is the last time the device re reports a latitude and longitude location. Um, and then we have her timing advance at 920 and 926. Again, that device reports this approximately the same distance, um, so no movement uh, that we can see on her device. And then we have his device here, uh, the 3978 device, uh, again in red here, uh, reporting in several different distances from 0.4 to 0.9 between the 920 and 920 time period, again in this arc portion right here. Page 32. Uh, again, continuation 9.30 to 9.39. Uh, now I'm looking at just uh, his, uh, the 39.78 device. And what we see here is a lot of different timing advance arcs here. Uh, again, the first one is at 9.30.06 and it reports 0.58 miles, which is the farthest distance here. And then what we see is that device reports closer and closer and closer to the tower, meaning that device started at 9.30.06, ending at 9.39.55, was farther away and got closer to the tower, eventually using this timing advance arc here at 9.39.55. So again, I'd say the device was farther away from the tower and gets closer to the tower during this time period. Again, still no Rubin data um, from the device at 9.39. And you've already told us at this point, uh, Lake and Riley's digital profile does not move after 9.26 a.m., is that right? That's correct. So how long, from what time period, and if you need to flip back to look at your report, let me know, but from what time period to what time period did Lake and Riley's digital profile and the Jose Abara device profile overlap in the forest? Yeah, so approximately 9, 10 uh, on, pull up the slide here. So on page 12 uh, is where we saw the device at 9.10.02 as it traveled north and west on the trail and getting to um, the area at 9.10.36 that eventually it stays within that area and eventually moves off the trail approximately five minutes later. So uh, I would say, and also based on his timing events of where he is, plus the lack of Rubin data, uh, I would say that the devices came in contact somewhere around uh, the late portions of 9:10. So until when? Until approximately. I would say probably 9:32 is when we see his device. Again, on this slide here, we can see at 9.30, it's here. 9.30 and 53 seconds, it's now a little bit closer. 9.32.07, it's now a little bit closer. So I would say it's somewhere around the 9.30 to 9.32 time period. And then that device, the Hosea Bar device, is on the move at that point? Yes, ma'am. And, and in what direction does his device move and where does it go and at what time? Yeah, so again, um, we saw on the other slide at 9.30 to 9.39, it moved far, it started farther, and eventually got closer to the tower. During this time period at 9.40 to 9.50 a.m., um, now we have uh, timing events, plus now we're seeing the Rubin data again. Um, uh, the first uh, location of that Rubin data is at 9.40 a.m., a 98-meter hit. And then we see 9.45, and then eventually 9.50 here. And again, that all interacts with our timing advance uh, data we have here between 9.40 and 9.50 a.m. And you have marked in this uh, page 33 a D1 dumpster. What is that? Um, that's a location I was asked to look at as far as location information of where I think an article of clothing or something like that might have been thrown in the dumpster. And 
Is it consistent with the um, Ruben data that you have seen that that Jose Ibarra device is at that dumpster and could be at that dumpster at 9.44 a.m.? Yes. Uh, again, we have 9.40 here. Uh, the next location is at 9.45 here. So um, obviously you can see the scale of the map on the bottom uh, between the device, the, the dumpster here and this 945 is, is probably, I don't know, 70 or 80 feet uh, distance. So yes, it's completely logical that um, at 945 the device could have been near the dumpster, but it just didn't report a location during that time. The next one we had was at 945. And at 950 is the device back at the Abara residence? It is. Okay. And so at what time did the Jose Abar device leave his residence that morning on the 22nd? Yes, so it leaves the residence. The first location we can see that it left the residence was at 6.52 a.m. And what time does it return to the residence? Um, the returns back to the residence at uh, approximately 9.50 a.m.